thank you uh, for all those participants who had uh, logged in to uh, continue with the session on MPC guideline. And at the <clears throat> just to uh, give an introduction that uh, Institution of Engineers appointed a committee by the council uh, making engineer PH Sarat Kamini as the chairman and myself as member and engineer Nishankar Vijayaratne and uh, other members, engineer Susil Vijay Bandara. Those are the members uh, appointed uh, uh, by the uh, council. Uh, the objective is really to, <clears throat> as you are aware, uh, the parliament subcommittee and uh, even the electronic media and social media during the last few uh, I think few years, a really criticized, used to criticize the public sector procurement procedure. So they are for considering this present country situation. It has been a very vital requirement to prepare a comprehensive guideline for the procurement to minimize corruption and to achieve the procurement objectives. So under uh, so that the economic benefits and the value for money and timely completion, those uh, including the quality, those aspirations are fulfilled. So the objective is this goal uh, uh, for gathering needs to just to give an introduction and idea about for the uh, about the national procurement guidelines and the objectives of that. So once this session is over, all members are again requested to uh, after getting an idea. Uh, in which way the engineers or institution of engineers uh, should contribute and what sort of uh, uh, amendments, modification that we must contribute. Considering uh, all those criticisms and all those uh, uh, procurement related uh, uh, issues that had already been brought by the media. So with that short introduction, on behalf of President, President told me that he is attending another meeting. So on, <coughs> with that but introduction... He, yeah. Yeah, now he's in, I support. Just could you ask? Professor yes. Sana, I could add a few things. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Just ask. You see that I mean? Is he there? Yeah, sure, sure. yeah. Professor Sana, are you available? Professor Sana, it's not in the least I think, no. I just, yeah. Um, uh, host and the poor host. You know. uh -huh. Then we continue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then. Mr. Sarat, uh, I am available. So, all right. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, President, in your absence. Thank you so much. Actually, Please continue. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know that you are in some other. May... Okay. Sen, just to uh, if you are if you could manage just one or two words, but. Uh, yeah, I gave a formal introduction to the. No, ba basically, I I think uh, we have had the right people this time, so that I'm very much confident that the, we will come up with the a very uh, important uh, uh, output, so that that will definitely uh, benefit to the uh, industry as well as the engineering community. Uh, so I'm very pleased that the you have uh, very aggressively started the things and. Uh, very much committed to uh, complete the necessary uh, requirement. Thank you so much uh, for the whole panel, uh, especially uh, engineer Sarat Gavani, who is a good friend of mine. And I'm confident that I have been with him for uh, so many years working together. So many years, different kind of issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank President Nilek for initiating okay. the discussion. Thank you. Thank okay. okay. Uh, thank you, President, thank you. for the uh, grace in the occasion. So we will straight over, uh, straight away go to the forum. Then I cordially invite uh, our chairman, PH Sarat Gamini, uh, the chairman of the <coughs> committee, to start the session. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, President elect and the uh, uh, engineer. Rani Jayalat and uh, Professor Anjit Disanayaka. So I have given 60 minutes. So now uh, it's time uh, 7 to 12. So uh, the topic is very challenging one. Are we really achieving, are we really achieving the procurement objective set by the Procurement uh, uh, 
commission. Engineering Rani Jainath, can you hear me? Very clear? Yeah, very clear. We can hear. Clear. I think right. all okay. Now, you may have seen, uh, you may have received the ISL Secretariat has sent the letter and reminder also, where uh, we have requested for you all to consider about the three documents. NPA 2018 guidelines, NPC. Then we have NPC uh, manual and the draft guideline. There are three documents. And in the covering letter, we have mentioned, especially giving very briefly the procurement objective of this NPC as well as NPA, almost similar and whether it is being achieved through this guideline. So today I am trying to share with you all, our professional colleagues, uh, where we are at the moment, right? Where we are, right? So let me start uh, this presentation by uh, introducing, uh, there are some members, they have not much family with procurement. So a little bit about the procurement. Then we will go to next slide. Right, start with this one. What is procurement? There are four categories. You will see goods. Example, vehicle, pipes, then uh, medicine, so many goods. Then works, example. Asphalting, carpet, in the roads, pipe laying works, construction of school building, those are works. Then other services, example, hiring a vehicle. Then consultant services means if you want to do EIA, environment impact assessment, then you hire a consultant. Then that is the call consultancy service. There are separate document in procurement system. Uh, uh, how to hire a select consultant? Excuse me, Chairman. Uh, the slide seems to be not sharing. Oh, one second. All right, right. Okay, I will you know go back and check. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Now, is that okay? Uh, now, see, okay, okay, fine. Okay, sorry, right. So, uh, first slide, sorry for interruption. And uh, goods and, uh, I have described the goods, example, and works, and other services, consultant services, right. Then, uh, I would say, uh, procurement objective, keyword. Procurement objective. If you have seen the procurement manual, then you will see in the first page the purpose of having such process. That is given very clearly. You will see overall economical aspects, timely completion, then quality, Adhere to standard and specification, transparent system, uh, ensure minimum social and environment aspect, equity, value for money. All those things are there. I will explain you, I will compare with other countries also. Where we are, now you see people have raise major issues in our country. Purchasing of medicine. Then a uh, lot of protest, corruption. Then public sector issues. 
then uh, one member of parliament, uh, he say, per year 300 billion is wasted annually in Sri Lanka due to fraud and corruption. Claims procurement is where bribery and corruption are most prevalent in Sri Lanka. As we are very recently, IMF request government to publish all procurement activities above 1 million. So that is the background. So we, uh, I have prepared a few uh, lists of major issues in procurement process. Most important parties, you just think of whether there are such provision in our procurement manual. Number one, lack of identification of national priorities. At this moment, what do you need for our country? We have a short of capital, short of foreign exchange. What is the priority? In the last 10, 15 years, we have done highways, motorways, airports, so many irrigation projects. What is the criteria on selection of such projects? Have we achieved the objective, overall economical aspect, benefits to the nation, repayments of loan from the uh, returns on investment? That's a major issue. Then B, lack of me measures to identification of sector priority. Water sector. Are we going to provide water supply for all or only for certain areas? How do you select it? And whether we are going to go high bone everywhere or rainwater or shallow well improve. Sector priorities. We are to view when and uh, what's the mode of supply? That is sector priorities. Then very often, public complaints, poor quality. And some schools, they have uh, evacuated certain buildings and reallocate the students in somewhere. It's all over sometimes. Then B, cost run. That's a major issue. I got a comment from one Mr. Gum again. He was explaining about cost run of some of the projects. Obvious, there are price acceleration, uh, extension, cost run. Yes. But it is there, this issue. It is the problem is finally uh, contractors are suffering. Public sector, we are not entertaining all. Mm, Variations, price feature variation, especially. Then cost of run is a major issue. Then variations to be issued to the contractors. Maybe due to investigation. Maybe due to lack of investigation, due to lack of allocation. Unforeseeable situations. But those are issues. Then procurement process delay. Recently, I visited a tunnel project in somewhere, Palugasdaman, where tunnel is accelerated. Suction of tunnel. They have put two uh, uh, TBM, tunnel boring machine, TBM, and accelerated, whereas some of the other packages, upstream and downstream, uh, some may not be ordered also. So delay in procurement process, that's the problem. So can the city, it's a good example, Last five, six years, we are trying to have a multimodal car park. Now people are having spread all over. Bus stands are all over. Very difficult to find it. We have issues. We have problems. Yes. So these are the major issues where public heavy criticism. Then, G, lack of transparency. Do you think that we have, it is given in the objective, but we have done transparent manner? Have you seen you all the uh, the major projects in these respective agencies web pages? TEC technical evaluation reports, contract awards. Whereas you can get 
from the uh, through right of information act. So there are no, not much transparency, not much. Then political insurance, everybody knows. Then delays of implementation, social and environmental impacts, major issue. For example, uh, three days back, there was accident in wall area, collapse of trench. Sometimes, you know, just to remind you all, we have to arrange safety, but sometimes we don't provide provision to pay the contract and encourage. Sorry, you version. These are the things I am little things where we are now and where we should go. How do we change to achieve this procurement of this? Then M. I think there are more than 100 participants, almost 96. There may be, you know, representative from construction industry. We have a problem. We have undertaken large projects, 100,000 kilometers, water for all. And some of the um, projects, there was a problem on payment delay. I don't know whether now this time it's all resolved. Service providers are having serious problems. Then nowadays, on top of that, we have uh, major donors. They are not paying. Huge problem. Then, of course, poorly performed contractors. They are. Uh, and uh, the price variation index. They are updating CEDA. It's not compensated properly. And we say that, you know, imported items, we are not very much, but a lot of changes have been happening now. Equity, fair treatment. Sri Lankan contractor and Sri Lankan employer. Then we have international contractor and Sri Lankan subcontractor. There are a lot of problems. They cannot resolve. Our small-scale contractors become slaves of international contractors. Then participation, maximum participation, whether we are ensured the maximum participation. Then we have issue, lack of competent contractors and cost estimation. It's a big issue now. Are we, have we declared the cost estimation uh, properly with accuracy? I am trying to say new thing. In each cost estimate, you must be able to declare the accuracy. That is not there. And sometimes uh, we develop at principal stage low accuracy. Based on that, budget is prepared or allocated. Later, once you prepare more details, design, you go, then cost estimates is going up. These things are the very important uh, aspects. So those things are to be uh, addressed, major issues. Uh, then I just want to show you where we have 1995. Can you remember? Madhur Madhurkoil Pata, Procurement Guidelines, 95, I think. Then NPA, National Procurement Agency, established in uh, 2006. Then uh, an NPC with the 17th Amendment, National Procurement Commission was established. And uh, they have drafted and gathered it also, Procurement Guideline plus manual. Then again, 2019, it was cancelled as another gasset was issued. Then now again, NPC guideline uh, with 21, 21st, 21st Amendment. So again, it's established and consultants are working on that and they have given one document draft of it. So this is the background. Now I am trying to explain very simple thing. The procurement problems in typical one, in sample, now we have, you know, I am in the water sector. 
Now I used to uh, do certain studies. It was done 2016. Imagine that we have procurement guideline with all very simple one. More often, it's happening in universities, hostels, then uh, government hospital, and even government institution. We need to uh, just flushing units. And when we have done a sample survey case study, and we have found eight of us. No brand, no manufacturer, no project certificates, no guarantee, thousand. Then we have another one, we have brand name, 2,350. Then Rosell system, they have some, uh, they have, they are purchasing from another brand uh, and guarantees given. Then you will see uh, 8,750. 8,750. Brand name, German product. Lifetime guarantee. Then Arban, same brand, 8,500, but no guarantee card. Agents, Arbans, then same product, five year guarantee. That's an agent of Arbans. So you will see in this present context, if you follow normal single analog procurement, you will come this kind of situation, 1,000 to 8,750. When we try to put brand name, now Sida says don't put brand name. Very recently I saw. And sometimes auditors or NP guidelines also say don't put brand name in Monday. If you insist product confirm certificate endurance, these suppliers doesn't have. Just to think, taking the uh, example and uh, try to explain where we are. This is happening. For two months back, I went to get candy hospital. Uh, the director's eyes at this, Dr. Asha. This is happening. We are buying and replacing, again buying and replacing. Then, procurement objective, we have a policy. Yes, it is there. But then again, restriction. Fair trading. Don't pre divide You don't give the brand name. But technical evaluation committee or procurement entity doesn't have discretion. So this is the point I am highlighting. Guidelines are there. Then team of professionals are working on this one. Highly qualified experts are there. But they don't have a discretion, judgment to give these are the products appropriate based on this survey. These things are not happening and often polished by the agenda. But we ask you, we don't have a mechanism to express and get their concurrence. Showing the procurement objectives, overall economical aspects. If there are water leakages, nowadays for your information, capital cost alone per cubic meter is 1,600. 1,600. So institution, there are a lot of leakage in the institution. Huge net economical loss, energy, chemical, and capital. So our professional should have an environment to do this analysis and give recommendations. So IESL, Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka, should promote this one. So what I am expect from you all, my friends, give your suggestion, proposal on this slide. Where you have constraint, you know how to give a solution. But there are constraints in the our bidding document or bidding process. I used to say that there are non-standard practices being practiced forever for the last 10, 15 years and become standard. 
asammata sammata vela. Today I discuss with senior officials of SIDA about this uh, procurement uh, restriction on brand name. What he says, nowadays, you know, we have a practice, no, you can't put the brand name. Who say that is not possible? Why Technical Evolution Committee and Procurement Entity decide what is suitable, genuinely? Just I am uh, trying to explain the root cause of the problem. Right. Then, very interesting one. Just to show you another example. As per the NPA guideline, if your bid document, if they are given bid document and which bid this not signed, rejected. With the big bond, still rejected. Then amount, slight changes, reject. Validity, 90 days, so 85 days, rejected. But whereas we have mentioned in our procurement perspective, procurement documentation, maximum participation, promote competition. Nowadays, they have deviated this procedure, and uh, this time, 23 guidelines, they have not much mentioned, but I don't know about the uh, manual. These are traditional. There was one case. It took one year. It took one year to give verdict. Can this were it? Certain Indian contractor was Japanese contract. Japanese contractor, there was a, one signature was missing. Re rejected. Bid form is not signed. That's not legal. So I asked my colleague, why don't you ask them to sign? Oh, no, no, our guideline says to reject. So we have prepared our own guideline. Then say my hands are tied. Now we have to reject. That was pre-qualified contract. It went up to the, at that time, Secretary Ministry of Finance, and he has appointed a committee, ladies committee, very famous. And finally, they have counted number of signatures in the bit. There were 42 signatures. Covering letter, so many affidavits, so many things, and pre qualified contract. So it took one year. So my friends, these things are happening. Well, recently, uh, registers of company. There are some circulars say, you have to get the registry. You have to register it, even the bids, then you have to use certificate. So sometimes the contractors they forget, or they may have a difficulty on getting online certificate. The bids are rejected. Sometimes they call. So that is enough to understand. We have our own procurement guideline. We have we have not achieved our procurement objective. I can do so many things. So we reject bids. What is wrong with that? Can we give the deviations? So these things should be addressed. Bids are rejected, so losing competition. Very few bidders available, sometimes recalling, delays. I just explain a very simple one to understand. What do you think? Should we allow discretion to the procurement entity and the TEC? These are big issues in procurement. Say. No, no, it has to, we should not give and, and all that. Your attention. I like to invite your attention for this factor. So my observation, are we really addressing the major issues in procurement? I just list out. Are we selecting very uh, feasible economic returns with economic returns, national level projects, sector priorities, equity, fairness, quality, timely completion? So, what is required is 
purpose of this awareness is also to think about the issues that we are facing and whether this particular bid document, uh, these guidelines, provides answers. What other modalities, alternatives to be found? For that, uh, I like to mention about this uh, Professor G. L. Pires when he was uh, preparing Open University uh, test books. Very nice statement. I am not a lawyer, a lawyer, but you know, says jurisprudence. Very nicely written. It is for him to prop. The nature and purpose of the law of civil government and all modality, whereby civilized living is possible. We have prepared a guideline. Objectives are there, but we cannot achieve all of them. What is the purpose? Then he says he must use his sense of discretion. We have public health officials. They are well qualified. They have given the training, masters, PhDs, with all experience. They are remuneration package or things. Finally, they are not allowed to take decisions. So what the professor says, GLP is, he must use his sense of discretion for what? Determine whether the equitable objectives sought to be achieved. Today, my question is, are we achieving procurement objective? What is given? Whether we have a discretion, whether it is allowed. Then it's nicely you know, written, you know, some more sentences. If not, What are the other instrumentalities are available to achieve this objective with great efficiency? This is what we are trying to do, ISL. We are not achieving proper objective. Huge criticism. There are a lot of problems. From the right from the beginning, selecting the project up to implementation. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, providing the benefit to our society at last. So what we need is we have to involve our public sector officials with the participation of contract and consultant as a team and find the solution. Ways and means so that our NPA guidelines should provide the framework so you may just think of on this slide and give suggestions. So this is uh, uh, Aristotle's statement. Uh, he said, a man must make the fullest use of cognitive and analytical powers. So we have learned up to grade 11 maths. Why did the school curriculum, why they taught us? This is where. Analytical powers. We have to make use of analytical powers to ascertain the environment, control over his environment. So, gentlemen, <clears throat> now I'm moving to the practical situation. Procurement environment. Objectives are there, guidelines are there. Now, imagine where we are public officials. They are facing. Now environment is number one. Better to give it to the lowest bidder and forget it and relax. No worry. This is what's happening in Sri Lanka. Third party includes brokers, market forces. Yes, it is there. Poor disbursement due to delay of contract awards. Then pressurizing the team to avoid this admit that. Less value for practicing of codes, ethics, etc. Word and never 
lack of due recognition for quality. I shall show it, you know, the first example where bathroom fittings are. Similarly, quality problem. Then political authority, time to time election. Next year, there are two or three elections. Need of political authority, expedite. Mm -hmm. Opening ceremony at the Kodigahara. That is there in our country. Officials are forced to do it. Some officials, of course, they go behind and organize the opening ceremony and all that. Due to various reasons. Whereas users are waiting to get benefit. Farmers are waiting to get water. Poor people, they are waiting to get water supply. Power sector reliability. Those things are delayed or poor quality is happening. So this is a background where our public sector officials are working. Then, gentlemen, we have identified procurement objects. Very nicely written. Again, I am showing you NPA guideline 2006. At the moment, this is valid. NPC is under draft stage. Very nice words. Maximizing economy, comma, efficiency, effectiveness. Then, if somebody can't understand, they have put value for money within the bracket. Very nice. So very good objective and the chapter one, 1.2.1, adhering to the standards, specification, local laws and regulations. Then objectives, there are set, I just explained. Maximum economy need, resulting least cost together with high quality. Fair and equal opportunity for bidders. Are we just reject current enemy? Provide fair, equal, and maximum opportunity for eligible interested parties. We are rejecting for you know bid bond, they can do the correct and they can bring it correct value. We are not allowed it. So these things are happening. Whereas we have written in the page one, Palavini Pituvi. There's a nice song. We take our value here. Then happy noble vegetame, first page. So that is enough, then I will go to the World Bank. It's World Bank procurement. They say overall objective of the guideline is to allow borrowing countries to buy high quality goods and service as economically as possible. So nice. Then, then JICA guidelines. Economy, always economy efficiency, transparency in the procurement. Then unsettled UN procurement. Maximizing economy and efficient procurement. Fostering and encouraging participation in procurement process by suppliers and contractors regardless of nationality. That is UN guidelines. Providing for the fair, equal, equitable treatment for all suppliers contractors. Promoting competition among suppliers and contractors. A very interesting one. Promoting the integrity and fairness and public confidence. Nowadays, I think people, majority, they must thinking, where this social media and give criticism all over, then Canadian. Very nice. They have mentioned about promoting their local industry. I will circulate again. You check with the NP guideline. There is no such thing. Local industry promotion, it is not there. So I just compared for you all. To understand various donors, UN, and they have also given similar guidelines or more specific towards the economical benefit, fairness, public confidence, 
maximum participation next six. Now I have selected the slide about New Zealand government procurement. Very interesting. Very simple language. In the procurement process, they have identified key objectives. Plan and manage for great results. How do you identify what you need and then plan how to get it? Really identify the what we are trying to purchase. Set up the team with the right mix of skill and experience. Involve suppliers early. Let them know what you want and keep talking. Keep talking. Are we practicing this? Openly, we can involve suppliers and contractors. We have pre bid meeting, advanced procurement notices. We can discuss with them, get their opinion. Sometimes we call tenders, finally call. We put a specification, there are no items as such to satisfy from the agent. Take time to understand the market and you effect. Are we doing that? We are doing theoretical process. We are asked to do follow standard specification and uh, standard uh, bidding document. We do that exercise. Definitely. See the also insist. Don't do any changes. We, these are the developed countries. I think first best seven countries. One of that is New Zealand. See, be open to new ideas and solutions. Consult stakeholders and get their views. This is how they have practice. Choose the right process proportional to the size, complexity, and risk involved. This is very important for human entity and TEC. It's the consultation of uh, contractors, service providers. We have to, as a team, we have to develop our bid Encourage e business. So, my friends, you know, this is what I got this uh, sample uh, document, mainly, especially for uh, to give a thought, good for thought. Then, next one, get the right supplier. Get the right supplier. Be clear about what you need and fair in how you access suppliers. Don't shrink suppliers alone. Choose the right supplier. Pre-qualify the supplier. Who can deliver what you need at a fair price and time? Not only one supplier. There are pre-qualified suppliers. You can pre-qualify and criteria. Not in one tender. For the uh, purpose, entire say hospital. What about can pre-qualify and give the list? All public sector, they can buy it from this recommended. Build demanding but fair and productive relation with suppliers. Make it worthwhile for suppliers, encourage and reward them to deliver great results. Identify relevant risks and get the right person to manage them. Risk manage. We are trying to give it all risks to suppliers. We have a problem opening of LC. We say that we cannot also open it. So you Buy it and bring it. Purchase and bring it. So share the risk. So guess the deal, best deal. Guess the best value for money. See the words. Account for all cost and benefits over the lifetime of the goods and service. Life cycle cost. Are we analyzing? How do we get the data? These things to be promoted. Make balanced decision. Consider the social environment and economic aspects and new ideas. Respect new ideas. Partners. Don't consider, consider contract as one. Ways of doing things. Effect of the deal. So similarly, gentlemen, they are uh, developed countries and some countries, they have adapts appropriate system. So I give this example, 
mainly there are countries they have adapted procurement objective they have identified correctly and they have regulation to enforce. We have a nicely written, except this local uh, uh, industry promotion, very good. But practically, see the New Zealand guide behind procurement. That's very interesting. How do they look at it? contract and supply as a partner? And always they say, identify what to buy. Very simple language. Keep on talking to the suppliers. Yeah, for any way, openly. And identify the respecters and share with them and prepare the documents and go for procurement. So, popular <laughs> failures in achieving procurement objective. I think our engineers, we you know, 100,000 kilometer program and various allegation level for our engineers at various forums. Then health sector, a lot of criticism. Popular failures. We have prepared this one. Popular failures. Detection rates. Various commissions and allegation by every corruption filed against Chairman of Sri Lanka Port Authority. They have given the name also. Story of Hambantara Port. These are popular failures in our country. Then, a uh, final part. I got a couple of, you know, comments, feedback, and prepare certain recommendation for you all to consider. So we have started at 7, uh, 10, now 44 minutes gone. So that is enough. I can finish this uh, recommendation based on what we have got. For you all to think, put forth out. We are looking for such recommendation. You can go to the guidelines and change the guidelines, introduce this word, that word, delete this one. That is also possible. But national priority, number one recommendation, what I have suggested. One of my colleagues, Mr. Palgado, helped. He prepared this one based on we had a Zoom list. Identification of national priority, very important. But procurement commission should understood, understand this. And the private chapter, overall economical aspect cannot be achieved without identification of national priority. There should be independent panel, sector-wise or national level. National level priority, are we going to invest for roads? or <clears throat> fertilizer subsidy, or water, or health sector, hydropower. This is very important. In this our procurement guideline that we start from procurement activity schedule. They are not worried about the feasibility, feasibility, whether it's a part of master plan. Who cares about that? Now they were talking about the Ingura Gure Airport. He asked 11 ministry additional second. Do you know that whether there are such? She said that no such master plan, no priority. I don't know even Ingura Gure Airport. All of some international airport. I am telling this example to demonstrate that all of a sudden there will be a contract and do some work in Ingura Gure. Imagine what's a slight situation. I can also about how many railway bridges in danger situation. To do investigation, dam safety, you need money. So we have to identify the priority. Then, what is national priority? Then sector and institutionalized priority. That should be an independent panel. And they should declare it open, the web page. All master plans should be declared. 
now according to right of information that I provide, we can ask, they might delay it, but better if we can find all uh, feasibility reports, design reports in a web. So one of my suggestions will come later on establishment of such database. Procurement method, as uh, New Zealand procurement guidelines mean. Keep on talking with suppliers and they identify the potential suppliers, contractors, and decide whether to go for ICB or NCB. Donors, they try to obvious go to international companies. We have to identify the packages in such a way that we must be able to promote Sri Lankan joint ventures. We have to promote our industry also. Those things should be included in the guideline. The guideline says, if the owner says ICP, then NCP. Local preference is not there. This time guidelines say equal. Other countries, Canada, local industry. Even World Bank, local industry promotion. Respective country. Paris donor, if the declaration, there, are eight, there was eight effectiveness meeting. Local, we have a country. We need our industry to develop. We don't want to become you know, subcontractors of Chinese major contractors. That's happening. Dear friends, if you could, you know, mute very much convenient for us. Right. Then we'll go to this one. Project entities have designed the document based on size and complexity, based on standard building document. Now, very important, I mentioned discretion. Project entity with TEC, they should be able to design the bid document with changes. Always standard bid document with deviation, we have to do. See that I do in this, don't change. We have to show them that we have studied the procurement environment. These are the changes required. We do it. Achieve the procurement objective. Achieve the procurement objective. See the CEDA. They have said suddenly there were a couple of requests and no more brand name and country of. So they have to think about the overall uh, situation in the country. People are bringing material, poor quality material, and public sector, as well as poor consumers, they use it. So these are the recommendations should come from uh, our professional group. Then, very important one, single stage, two stage, single stage, two and low. As I explained at the beginning, when you open the financial offer, natural tendency, especially from counter and all, they say, no, no, give it to lowest. Sometimes with devaluation committees also tend to give, forget it, we'll give it to lowest, no audit queries. Technical evaluation committee should have a decision. They should take Decision, discretion, then only it could be possible to get achieve procurement objective. For that, we should allow single stage to unlock. I think most of them know to unlock first technical offer, then financial offer. Even the evening I went through J uh, JICA, uh, this uh, NPC guideline, it's a complicated procurement. Large procurement. What is this? Two stage and law. We have to uh, allow the procurement entity and the engineers to make decision, especially the pro uh, team, uh, bid evaluation team. So what is required is two and lock, uh, single stage two and lock system. 
Similarly, we have to find ways and means. This was we prepared sample recommendation. With your knowledge, with your experience, we have to come up with uh, such recommendation in order to address these major issues, failures in public sector procurement. We are not achieving the procurement objective. Then number six, in this country, last three years, we had a severe problem. We used to get performance bond from contractors. But sometimes public sector agencies, we are unable to pay. And we are not paying interest also for the queries and all. Especially not allowing. We have to have a mechanism so that if there are no funds or funds cannot be assured by the respective uh, institution, they should not call for the tenders. There was a request from Ministry of uh, uh, Construction Industry, not Ministry, our chamber. Government also should give guarantee. Can that take you for performance? Government should give, institution should give, what about electricity board should give, payment guarantee. Why not? Equity, equal treatment. Our local industry uh, about to collapse. Contractors are suffering. So these are very critical suggestions. I know public sector, I level treasury of, they may not look like it, but we have to promote. We have to insist and we have to do their such need. Then project entities, they have well experienced people with procurement entity. They should have an authority to make major and minor deviation on procurement. But I am telling, always there is a condition. All these things should be published. So public sector officials, if they know that their decisions being published in web pages, they will be questioned. So that they are forced to take very fair and decision. But give them authority, make the decision. But it has to be published. National procurement guidelines are only guidance to good governance and achieve objectives. When necessary, project entities can differ from them. Then P and tender board decisions are to proceed. Very bold decision. Very bold decision. We are recommending. Let procurement entity and TEC and the tender board, they are responsible. Their decisions are to be published, accountable, transparency should be established. You take and give us the best advice. Then pre-qualification of contractors, products, manufacturers. Definitely we have to do. As you know, most of the items are important. Even salt, even lime, chlorine, all important. Toothpicks also you are important. So uh, we, but a lot of quality issues are there. Ibarra pumps, price also different. Japan, Indonesia, Vietnam. We know quality also there is different. ABB, Hanover, Germany, and ABB India, there's a difference. So finally, engineers, we are responsible for the performance. So price is not the criteria. Life cycle cost, cost of interruption. One hour interruption power supply, what's the cost? Effect to the society. Water supply is like six hours interruption. All those things to be calculated. Life cycle cost, as New Zealand guidelines says that. We have to evolve the methodologies, methods, database, for to evaluate and give the uh, best option, economic evaluations. 
What is the cost of energy? How many dollar cents? Effect of due to a power failure. What is the impact? We must have a good database. Then number 10, all documents to be transparent and published in the client website. 2018 guideline, in fact, there was a such provision, similar. I don't know whether it was you know, completely abolished because of that clause. They have uh, proposed to have uh, a uh, database construction nice word is there i will find out uh, open contracting database standards open contracting database standards we have circulated this npc 2018 you can refer 14.1 there they have recommended that committee chairman told very few members agreed for this one. Now high time, even IMF says publish. We have to say ISL, all documents from feasibility, feasibility, design, bid document, TC reports, technical evaluation report, tenable decision, cabinet approval, awards, awarding letter, special agreements, addendums, then completion report, and follow-up study. All should be published in client's web page. That is the must. Then no need to, you know, people to put here and their petition and all, because it is there. Most important benefit is that all those who are preparing feasibility reports, studies, consultant, or our own, our engineers, mainly in all, and other professionals, they know that this report will be published. And authors, list of authors, chapter-wise, it has to be a published. PHS Garmini preparing for this one, hydraulic. Salgar is preparing mechanical aspects. So it has to be published then only we can contain this corruption process and get involved our faithful professional citizens, accountants, other um, scientific service officials, SLS officials, as if they know that it is published very carefully. That's a way, one way, absolute transparency. And we must promote it then only we can get value for money, overall economical aspects, timely completion, quality. Then number 11, no time is uh, 2011, so I'll take one minute. Price exhalation, everybody knows. There are a guideline in 2018. Price Contingencies to be used only for that provision for period more than one year. What kind of guideline? ISL 2017, it was protested. It was a protest. And I explained to the Mr. Gunwarza also. But still it was there. These things, nowadays, we have to pay, that means either plus or minus, from the day one. Sometimes we we take two, three, six months for bid closing and awarding. Then another one year or six months. How can we predict the price variations plus or minus in future? How do we, public sector officials, prepare an engineering estimate? What is the accuracy? How much you allow? There are some experts. They don't have a good experience, well experience on procurement aspects. They have not done. Therefore, we must. Hello. 
Hello? All right. Oh, oh. I mean, all right. Then, institutions have to develop and have their own database. Sure. Past performance of our suppliers, contractors, we have to maintain. Then, delay soft payment. We have to compensate. We have to compensate. And those things should be included in the guidelines. So these are sample recommendations. Sample recommendations. You should prepare with documents. Reasonable time period for preparation and bidding shall be provided. Sometimes procurement activity schedule. We are trying to squeeze three weeks. Important item. Not practicable. Contract period also, based on available data, information, consultation with the contractor stakeholders. Sometimes we are trying to expedite. We say six months, practically to bring the pipes at least four, five, six months. So can we do it late one month? These are not practical. So those things should inbuilt in our procurement guide. So, President elect uh, Engineer Jailak. So I am trying to conclude this uh, presentation. And uh, what is required is I have given the core procurement objectives, then where we have failed, and sample few cases, then international uh, donors how they have looked at procurement, especially in New Zealand. And I have a couple of sample recommendations. So finally, engineers, we have to find ways and means and submit to the government. Considering the first page, overall economical aspects, timely completion, quality, transparency, equity, and maximum opportunity for the people, minimizing social and environmental impact. So this presentation, I am concluding, and that may, uh, you could, if there are clarification, you could ask. Over to uh, Dr. Um, uh, Engineer Jaila, uh, MC. In the dialogue, you could uh, you could open the uh, um, forum. You could ask for clarifications for that new discussions. Feedbacks. So, gentlemen, uh, uh, I will check with Mr. Gani Jailas is around. If not, so uh, now uh, I think we have how many people? I think more than 97. Anjini Gani Jayarak? Uh, yeah, okay. I just finished the uh, my presentation. You may do the rest. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Engineer Sarat. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, yes, yeah. Very ah, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think we straight away opened the floor for the questions because it has almost taken one hour. Very good presentation. Uh, uh, so the Chamila, I think the uh, all the participants the mic could be unmute and we give gradually for each uh, those who are uh, willing to express their concerns about the presentation so that uh, we could proceed on. Uh, the floor is open for questions and observations. Thank you.
uh, even can uh, put the chat box into the uh, chat message also i have i have some uh, mr tewal uh, could you share that uh, there was a um, message in chat box disappeared yeah uh, message is uh, Jamana, yeah from the uh, Tiwahar messages. I have some clarifications. Please give me the contact number. Ah, okay. Uh, no triple seven, my number. No triple seven, eight not nine, mm -hmm. double six okay. one. Yeah. Double not six one. Yeah. Eight not nine, double yeah. six one. Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, yeah. thank you, sir. I have uh, some questions. I will contact with you personally because I'm in the working uh, Sri Javatana Municipal Council. So we have a lot of problem for the procurement works. So these, I have a lot of uh, questions are there. So I need to uh, freely talk with you, sir. Right, okay. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. So we have, we have 97 uh, participants. Saragdhamini, I am Jai Sri Vardhana. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Good I can hear yeah. My good friend Saragdhamini, uh, my sort of clarification I require is there's a lot of controversy now on the unsolicited proposals in the country. I mean, uh, they to, um, for the big projects. Uh, what do you recommend for those to make it uh, I mean, uh, open or uh, open and all that and uh, transparent? For those type of proposals, Sir Damin? Yeah, I vehemently protest this system. Maximum participation, that particular is condition is not achieved. And we all know why such system were brought to this country. We know sometimes uh, we cannot openly tell, but everybody knows what's up to them. And uh, sometimes they give excuse, we can do very quickly. Hmm? One package, design and build, it's one. We have bad experience. And we should not allow this switch challenge system and this uh, particular uh, unsolicited proposal. ISL should strongly protest on unsolicited proposal. Now, we are not in a hurry now. We have limited money. Donors and these commercial banks, they insist. So our professionals, SLAs, officials, and they should have courage to give a feedback. So that ISL and other professional organizations get together and lobby, inform the public sector, top management, institution-wise, and government. Thank you, uh, Engineer uh, Jayasit Vardhana, raising that matter, uh, very important, yeah, obvious. Is that satisfied, Jayasit Vardhana? Yeah, thank you, Nisam. thank you very much. I think, uh, sir, I open and we should take uh, note of that. Thank you, Nisar Gamani. Thank you. DG, DSN, we have a question. Yeah, yeah my name is uh, Shantafan Andrew, my ah, good sir. friend. Yeah, I think uh, there are so many things I'll, I'll take because there are a lot of uh, participants. I will take one one uh, example about you said now this uh, this water, this uh, household things like that cisterns. I think in the water boat, can you remember, I think some time back, I think that uh, PVC pipes, right? So we have prepared a short list. We have, we have prepared a... Uh, specification and you are buying billions of billions of uh, things i think pipes with because of the specification I think there are, are many criticisms and I, I don't think people can play a lot about that i think when you prepare specification so to overcome that i think we we must encourage i think you can't do it in one year maybe you take maybe several years and prepare specification that is how i think countries like singapore do they have specification for every item you bring in, like the foreign item, you have a local legend, right? Because foreign man is not in that country. So you must have a local legend. And I think local legend is responsible for spare parts supply. Plus, I think a quality problem, I think he's, he's answerable. So they have 
have some laws like that to i think uh, overcome this kind of situation and I, they have shortlisted everything with good specification i think sometimes i think you can't do it overnight you need some technical inputs and to do these things but i think you do that i think uh, evaluation people have no ambiguity but they can easily evaluate and you can dispose it fastly because as you say i think uh, price range from 1000 to 7000 7, i think you can't evaluate it is practically impossible because if you specify with a good specification then i think you can buy that so i think you are maybe must encourage as iesl like to prepare specification even for if you take water board i think even dei pipes we have standard specification and a short list so you are buying from that i think uh, people can't i mean evaluation is easy i think and faster and I think you can get good economy of the purchase purchasing things. So I, I, that is one. Number two, I think this word procurement. I'm a little bit confused. I think uh, I think guideline is for economy. I don't know whether it is economy is for. I think that there is one 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 area project identification. I think before that, I think this procurement per se. I don't know. It may be under the one term. The whole thing. So are we are we going into the whole area, including the project implementation and implementation problem, or only the procurement part? I mean, uh, this. So it says economy. Right. I don't know whether they are referring to the economy of the uh, the procurement part, not the not the, the project. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, may uh, add first one. Water board. We have found market is saturated with poor quality. Now, what about already prepared 24 Sri Lankan standard? SLSI prepared with the assistance of water board. And uh, they are about to enforce it through trade and policy and import export. And consumer PS authority should monitor. Our problem is when you go by uh, specification, means we have to refer the standards. You need standards. And what will happen without testing facility? It is very difficult because there are people, suppliers, they bring product and permit certificate. That is also there. But at least if you uh, impose regulatory measures for water fittings and electrical fittings, already they have done. We can manage it. As we say that specification means standards. And standard, you get the testing facility also. So with this Candy Note projects, there are 17 test benches are to be established in SLSI. So that this uh, 24 standards already prepared. It's not only for purchasing of government, it's a regulatory measure for the entire country. That means they have to bring it at least set to satisfy minimum quality. So that is one thing we are doing that. Until such time, the water board, as you say, that water board, either available specification and recommend suitable manufacturers, country of origin, based on the uh, end use experience. Then third one, controversial issue. Overall economical aspects, they have put it in our guideline. But whereas they define procurement staff, pre-procurement activities, and uh, from the uh, bid document preparation or procurement activity schedule. This way I am telling this, End of the day, civil society wants or all economical aspects. Donors also required. Our agency also want. But they have simply forget that this cannot be achieved after identification of the after finalizing the proposal and packaging. Too late. Too late. So that's why I suggested in this procurement guidelines. In this forum, IESL should strongly recommend procurement system guideline alone. We cannot achieve the final objective. 
So we have pre-procurement activities. 2006, there is a guideline. They say pre-procurement activities. They have listed EIA and land acquisition, social impact assessment study, uh, um, uh, those things. But now we have found uh, our way of evaluation, identification proposals are not satisfied or really not giving deliver the required good and service as we expected. So ISL think tank should seriously consider this one. As this is entrepreneurial reward. Confusion. Procurement means what's the starting point? What you got the starting point? Good question. My suggestion is this part also to be part of procurement. End of the day, procurement means it's uh, from the day one, feasibility report, identification of best project. These are the most important parts. Procurement, detailed procurement, or at the right from the beginning, identification of uh, quality projects. Right. Any other the questions? One, 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 one small thing. I refer yeah. to what about as an example what we what the procurement what are the items to be purchased you must have as far as possible standards and specification to be developed that can be a recommendation that can be achieved over, over years not not tomorrow so I yeah think, sure yeah, that, yeah. in fact Santa Fernanda, uh, the procurement objective it is the adhere to specification standard that is there and quality, value for money, those things are there. But we have not practiced years. And uh, my suggestion is that regulatory measures should come because then market, you won't get duplicates, poor quality products in the market, like similar to Australia and others. They give buyback guarantee. So in our country, when we suggest this thing, <laughs> they say that foreign exchange loss, you have to spend $10 to buy this one, whereas we can buy for $2 like that. There are hardware fellows in the almost street, they are telling. And uh, they have, you know, I will later explain to Mr. Antipane and do. We have done for regulatory measures for plot operated value. There are four approved product SLS but in the market you get illegal products what about has written through ministry and ministry has written to the CEA consumer Pairs authority do the rates then consumer Pairs authority come under certain ministry that secretary also other part nothing has happened so in time to come we have to have a mechanism to enforce these things I know why it is so, but we cannot tell or open forum like this. It's also another way of corruption. We have regulations, and some or other they bring it to the custom, and they sell it. Consumer Pairs Authority not doing any rates. We have conducted so many awareness. So we need public officials to act considering their responsibility and fairness. It is very unfair for uh, good quality manufacturers. Right. Very good suggestion, Mr. Antipanayan, specification as per the objective specification, adhere to standards. And our what board has done for regulatory measures to bring it for not only public sector, entire Sri Lankan market. So similarly, electrical fittings. CFL bulb, they have a problem. Now, of course, Sustainable Energy Authority, they have a lot of hard work and they have a specification and standards and they have, uh, uh, that system is now well under control and they have a marking system also, points also, five star, three star like that. 
it's working well as a sample. Any other? Okay, may I ask okay. a question? May I ask? Can we... Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, this is regarding the government project. The government clients uh, likes to offer their projects to directly to the uh, government organization for consultancy and construction uh, to avoid uh, uh, tender procedures and for going for past construction of the projects. Uh, what about in the uh, in the new guidelines? Uh, is it uh, is still is still possible to offer directly to the government consultancy organization the government projects? Uh, or if it is possible, what are the limitations or restrictions now according to the new guideline? Yeah, that is a good question. I know in and out. I have got this feedback sometime back. NP guideline, uh, there were concession government. And time to come, these government institutions are about to collapse. We have to assist them. That's the government policy. And ask them to give a, a very, very quick offer. But practically, not practically, in according to the procurement objective, it's not fair. No equity. Favoration. And... Uh, 2023 uh, it guidelines already there you can refer it says no more favoration uh, special uh, deviation for public sector institutions but cabinet papers comes and give certain work for certain institutions like CCSD and CCCC like that they give but my opinion that is wrong why? Then uh, other uh, private sector agencies, they may not have uh, opportunity. Equally, nowadays, very specially, we have a lack of job. So, and fairness, equity, it's a favoration. I know consultancy business also, there's a problem. Is that Okay, or satisfied? Is there in any dif departmental limitation if uh, they are they are given to projects given to a, a, a government consultant? Any any limitation in the budget, like hundred mil, maybe fifty million, like that? Departmental law ministerial uh, limitation in the new guideline. What is the situation regarding the limitation? I think it's still allowed. I think no. According to that one, not prohibited. Uh, and 23, it is not allowed. 23 not is not allowed. allowed. Completely, it's prohibited. Yeah, completely. But uh -huh. I don't know whether manual, now it's a guideline, then there's a manual also. Exceptional circumstance, disaster situation, like that, timely completion, those things will come under cabinet, uh, with the cabinet to, paper. Yeah. We have to go In this country, procurement, paper. everything can be superseded by a cabinet paper. Okay, then means uh, under cabinet approval only we can implement that. Yeah, now that deviation is not there. Okay. I saw evening also I checked. No, it is not there. It's a good trend. It's a good trend. Fairness. It yeah. should be there in the procurement objective also. It is clearly mentioned. But on the other hand, one, yeah, on one, you know, spend one. On what date uh, this is going to be implemented? The exact date, the whatever the decision uh, we need to make first, you know, the before the if any. Now, any NPC, uh, that of course, I don't know, they are in a hurry, rush. They wanted to get it in January or something like that. They were talking. But mm -hmm. I think uh, when you prepare 2006, then 2018 one was good, comprehensive. There were a lot of the certain changes to be done. 2021 in a rush, they are preparing. They had a stakeholder meeting and they think, ah, now it's okay. And now we are going ahead with this. So important uh, framework agreement, not the green uh, building, um, 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 uh, those aspects and green procurement and this uh, construction database, all those chapters are deleted. So this particular one, effective date, they are trying their best to do it on January. That's what I get it. One of our procurement members 
uh, our committee member, uh, Engineer Nishanka Vijayaratna says, they have a contact with uh, maybe German. They, they are trying to do. So ISL, we can submit comments within short period and submit it to the highest level and say that, don't rush it. Mm. We have the NPA guideline. For 2018, we have edition is there. So until such time, we will prepare uh, our guidelines to the environment. Present situation is different. No? Yeah. Right. Chavan, there is uh, one other uh, uh, member has raised his hand. Ruan Desapri, we can. Yeah, Ruan Desapri, yes. Right, sure. Ruan can. Right. Uh, sir, I have, I have some uh, simple question. Uh, in the invitation for bid, uh, we mentioned uh, the bid will be closed uh, at 10 a.m. and immediately open, or open thereafter. Uh, so that means uh, in this case, uh, then I suggest uh, why can't we give some uh, 10 minute like interim period for all bidders without opening? That means if 10, 10, 10 past 10, all bid can be open because the 10 minute within 10 minute duration, maybe we lost some important bidders. So we can, uh, the, the, what's the main drawback if we? keep a duration for the bid opening time instead of giving sharp time. Right. Now, this time uh, procurement guideline, guideline itself, they have given uh, implementing agencies not to reject at the time of bid closing. If there are delay tenders, let it accept. And objections, all everything to be uh, noted down. And uh, because there are some reasons when you open it, then the finally uh, the late bidder may be the best one. But if you open the financial of a like single envelope, uh, there may be question that you know this particular man put the SMS and he changed the discount and uh, brought it. So uh, what we required is maybe the procurement bidding committee, they should give the time, 10 o'clock and late submitter, they have to put the time and record it. Let the procurement uh, entity and NCB, uh, TC or uh, procurement entity decide whether to accept. If there are less bidders, maybe they have, they will justify it and open it. Right. Mr. Ruan. Uh, yeah, Mr. Sushil Bajay Bandara, our committee member. Yeah, I, I want to make some uh, yeah. two clarifications on two, two things. One is that uh, uh, giving uh, tenders on this negotiated rate. Uh, to government organizations now actually uh, actually they don't get a fair playing ground because now all these adb funded projects they can't tender they are they are not allowed to tender for adb funded projects so therefore what i feel is that uh, they must be given some kind of uh, opportunity to participate in this construction work especially the construction works because I know I, I worked in a government construction organization and now I am in the private sector. But I know the difference between the experience, construction experience, what the junior engineers get at these organizations and at the private, se uh, private sector construction organization. Because uh, generally these private sector construction organizations, uh, they have to handle uh, very limited uh, activities. It's, it's not a, I, I'm not blaming them because that is the environment. But uh, uh, so it is, I think, I still feel that uh, they must be given some opportunity by giving some construction works because they, they act uh, generally act as a training organization, basically. So that is one thing. And then acceptance of late bidders, late bidders. So, uh, uh, that uh, I think it is unfair by the 
the bidders who submit the tender on dead on the deadline because they take all uh, endeavor all uh, efforts to submit the tender uh, at the uh, deadline so if if others who submit uh, late bid maybe maybe half an hour late so <laughs> there's no limit so if you accept it uh, then uh, there can be i mean that is unfair by the bidders uh, who submit the bid uh, at the deadline so that's all thank you yeah right okay now i think uh, this time npc has found a solution that means we are not rejecting right but let uh, procurement entity ndtc or in consultation with tender boards or even npc whatever and make decision justifiable manner with good reason the public sector adb but jica is allowing for um, um, uh, government sector contractor i think uh, if they are not allowing adb and uh, national procurement agency or public finance they should intervene and ask now procurement ah. entity should ask uh, equity that they are guidelines ah. equity transparent system all that is there no so private sector yeah, contract yeah. Uh, also uh, and public sector contract also should have given no, that, was, that, was not, that that was not allowed uh, uh, mm, that is the, that yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. we, we tried everything uh, even when, in fact uh, our secretary that time mr instant gujarat now the secretary and he wrote to manila but mm. they they rejected it citing that uh, Uh, the the cncc board was appointed by the minister code the act and so they got down the act also and they they went through the act and they they, they i mean that literally they rejected so that is the situation mm. but jaika is allowing yeah jaika is allowing yes yes yeah, these is things allowing. i think yeah yeah german um, yeah, yeah. we uh, give the chance for uh, anuradha also who that anuradha yeah sure yeah. right okay <laughs> yeah yes sir. thank you for the uh, opportunity there my question regarding this pre qualification so experience what we have is uh, once we have the pre qualification there are only few uh, competitors is there so there is a possibility of having higher profit margin so are there any uh, possibility of adding guidelines to make it in a reasonable uh, profit margin and uh, other one is uh, for a government organization because most of the times we are talking about the government organization is, is there is a possibility to having uh, direct contact with the manufacturer rather than having having, uh, uh, having the local agents to have direct contact with the manufacturers for certain products to import it directly from the manufacturers are there a possibility to having uh, uh, any guidelines for the procurements uh, for this uh, yeah. purpose yeah they have a practice even what about we had a import section certain items we have import like that later after sale service then back up services and uh, if they have a, a manufacturers agent of course yes what we required is we need good quality material then after sale service and back up service also required now at the moment uh, there have a period this npa guideline was changed compulsory local agent is compulsory so there have a such period also even still uh, local agent compulsory is there at least it guide document so mr anradha uh, we can one thing we can say something and i think long run if there are manufacturers if they can continuously support and if they have a, a still office in sri lanka uh, still that cost is there now we can buy from them but backup support uh, for that 
we need a certain local office. It could be either agent or manufacturer's uh, office. So this is a debatable issue. Uh, we need service providers also. And uh, nowadays, uh, if they are not doing proper thing, we can directly import it and save something. These things, uh, engineers, we should uh, discuss the plus and minus, and we should recommend it. At the moment, local agent is required. But under this time, I can read the point. We can directly import items. Taking risk, if they have good manufacturer, of course, you know, they will support. They will uh, uh, provide the spare parts or inspection. And yes. Any may other question? Uh, yeah, may I ask if if the uh, uh, funding is uh, from a foreign donation, uh, can the government client give the give the construction or consultancy to a government organization, or uh, the the donator can donator specify uh, this construction uh, be constructed or uh, uh, constructed by with such government organization like is uh, is it clear uh, not clear not clear yeah uh, if you could elaborate what's the, uh, really yeah if loan any agency project, there, right? any government project is funded uh, by a foreign donation right agent uh, in foreign, such situation that means donors adb donors, world bank like yeah, that okay like donors donors yeah in such situation, can the government organization, the client, avoid the tender procedure? Can government organization avoid tender procedure and can directly give to a government organization? Now, it is not possible. No, that not is, possible. Yeah. Then, now, we have to go for public competition. But... All regulation can be uh, changed with the cabinet paper. Okay, right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, Mr. Radhami. Now I'm Vijay Bandar yeah. again. Now, uh, as far I'm as at now, all donor agencies want open tenders. Uh, it's uh, there are, there are restrictions only on the participation of these government organizations. Um, as you said, the JICA, World Bank, and other. Uh, for in funding agencies, they they allow government agencies to tender, but it's on, on only on all projects uh, are on tender. But I think even the cabinet, uh, they also can't uh, make a decision at the time of negotiating the loan. I think uh, those uh, policies are established. That's what I, I I understand. Okay, thanks. Sometimes we yeah. have, uh, uh, I just mentioned about Paris donor declaration. It says that more uh, uh, aid user, beneficiary community standards to be followed. The aid effectiveness, they had the meeting maybe you know, a couple of years back. Then there was a second session was Monaco. They are donors agree to do certain set of regulation. Very rarely, public sector institution make use of such recommendation agreement to get the maximum benefit. <coughs> now, ADB, not fair, say that public sector institutions should not uh, involve for tendering. Then at that time, we must ask from the ADB logic of that and make use of Paris donor declaration. Now, in, we, in our country, it's open tendering. Other way, no favoration to the public sector institution. So that is fair. So ADB cannot say discrimination. You, because of, you know, you are government agency and what's the effect? Those are time to time, depending on the officers. 
Sarat now. There are two. There are there are two conditions what they put forward. One is uh, the, uh, if the government government organization should be financially autonomous and legally autonomous. The financially autonomy, of course, uh, never said. If the NCC he got a letter from Treasury saying that we are not uh, funded by Treasury, but legally, what they say the argument is that uh, when the minister is appointing the board. the minister can intervene and uh, sort of uh, make some uh, interference to the progress of the work that is the argument so that that argument we couldn't account that was the pro- uh, problem at that time so this legal autonomy they are they are insisting that is uh, so yeah in fact the requirement in the given that there are more influence to the public sector clients by politician yeah yeah correct 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 <laughs> like this is the clients during the tender procedure it is not for the sdncc uh, board of directors are from treasury and, and all these are you know sometimes there are some officials yeah. and they have a personal discretion also and they are yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, arguing on this thing Uh, we have to have a donor forum now there was a, yeah, i can remember 90s donor forum so in front of mm-hmm. dike and world bank adb should say no we are not allowed then others will react yeah, yeah. so and th- uh, those actually, things we must take up separately with higher level yeah uh, actually this restriction came uh, somewhere around uh, 2007 after 2007 only they insist this uh, restriction before that uh, they allowed government organizations to tender so that is yeah. all strict okay okay amen <laughs> uh, any other anuradha yeah, yeah. is, is that you know clear to you or anuradha your question about the local agent no directly yes, important sir. yeah yeah, yeah. The, uh, so i just give as a suggestion of the, the, the method of directly importing to uh, yeah. to to address the issues of making some uh, uh, unreasonable profit from the pre qualification of the manufacturers uh, suppliers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so we we need to think about the adding some guideline to mm-hmm. to limit the uh, un, uh, unreasonable profit margin for the um, pre yeah. uh, to the pre qualification process because the competition going to be a uh, uh comparatively low within the mm. two or three people qualified um, uh, right you got the point yeah. yeah and now if we can you know that is the valid point end of the day or all economical aspects uh which uh, uh can how the me ruanu ruan also they have pre also suggested in fact he sent us a note also we will consider uh, about uh, with the our committee vijay bandar is there mr jayarat our engineer jayarat all we will consider a special discussion on this uh, pre qualification versus impact economical impact yeah price uh, yeah monopoly mm. yes yes yeah yeah always they try to exploit yeah then mr vijay bandar we will discuss yeah. because yeah. mr yeah. vijay Uh, Ruan also highlighted this. So uh, the yeah, Anuradha yeah. must be knowing lot of information. Yeah. That that's with right. that with background, the uh, ISL with the background already with the statistics yeah. information, we must uh, recommend some uh, ways to uh, eliminate such corrective yeah. action in the way. Chaman, then uh, yeah, yeah. we have take it. almost. uh almost come to uh, closing nine o'clock. nine o'clock we yeah. shall give the chance for another four minutes for the uh, uh four minutes now yeah, yeah. yeah one, one small remarks sarat now yeah. there are no donor agency sir please don't use that word there are no donors i think they are lending agency or funding agency please don't use that word as, as a procurement yeah 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 that correct correct please ഫോറം വി ഹാവ് ത്രീ മിനിറ്റ്സ് 
Ranjit uh, Tabru. Ya, 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 senior Chen Junior Ranjit Tabru. Okey. Yes, Mr. Abdul. Yes, Mr. Yes. Abdul. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 Uh, Engineer Gamini, you said that uh, we should not encourage any unsolicited uh, bids. But yeah. the unsolicited bids is an ingrained situation in Sri Lanka. Even today, the government has accepted the offer from some Australian to set up a big, large solar power plant. But our responsibility as engineers is to ensure the unsolicited process bids go through a proper bidding process because we need people to evaluate the original bid to see whether it's justifiable. And after that, it should go into open bidding so that it can be bidded by so many, but even giving an option for the proposal to bid the lowest bid if, if they are able to. So that way you will bring some uh, acceptable form of ex uh, taking in so unsolicited proposals actually. Your views on that please. Yeah, yeah. number one, uh, this power sector and other sectors also. There are people in, in donor uh, not donors. There are some, uh, say, uh, pro service providers, then they, or contractors. Then in Sri Lanka also we have agents. Yes. Then they try to negotiate with the respective ministers and other political authorities. And there are uh, certain commission also for local agents. They try to get the approval. Practically, uh, there was a period this all power projects should be published and call for the bids. That is, then only we can get the maximum benefits to us. Now, in case of foreign bidders, contractors, finally they will take the overhead and profit everything in foreign currency and they will take it back. So, in the way, say Mr. A, his profit and totally he recover the cost and take the profit from our solar and they will uh, uh, use it for their country. They will take it. Simply at least if Sri Lankan at least our investors could uh, do this business, we have some advantage. So that is there. Now ISL, uh, Engineer Tabru, ISL should address these things. We must, as a professional organization, we must give proposals to the government and uh, can try to convince them. One thing, government. Other one is our own members of respective institutions. At least we must ask our own institution members to come and explain why it was happening, why it was uh, allowed open discussion. My suggestion our members also supporting sometimes, sometimes forced to do it. So, ISL should have you know inventory a list of such issues, and we could ask friendly, why don't you explain? And can you avoid this one? Then, ISL advise that under these circumstances, we should avoid. Uh, we have to deviate from the past practice and give value for money, consider economical aspects, and be professional. Those things ISL could insist to our members as well. If our all members get together and act professionally, it is not that simple to politician to uh, get maximum possible deviation. Our resistance, our members' resistance also required. Yeah. So that is why I suggest all projects should be published in advance. Yes. And we can contain. Yeah. yeah. This is why we should include something on the new procurement guidelines on this 
topic, actually, sir. A good suggestions coming from the IESL. Yeah, yes. Thank you, Mr. Tabru. We get together and form. And first, we have to convince the IESL also. No? Now, we have four members. Then we are asking other members also to give feedback. Then one document. And then document to be circulated and debated. And then submitted to the uh, council and the uh, respective uh, commissions, political authorities, and other professional bodies. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, we had we spent about almost two hours, and uh, very enthusiastic crowd is still remaining more than fifty. Uh, so we will uh, uh, close the session today. Very fruitful. I think, Chairman, we uh, we will extend the period uh, for other members also to comment. Uh, because sure. we had, I think, close it on May as it was on 8 December. But based yeah, on the we'll uh, awareness yeah. today, we will, uh, yeah, okay, we will arrange that one. Uh, with that uh, remark, then thank you for the resource person, Chairman uh, of the Committee, Engineer Sarah Kamini, and all those who participated today and contributed in a very interactive way. Uh, we will thank all of them and uh, we wish a uh, pleasant and uh, good, good evening to everybody. Thank you very much. Right.